from some monkeys, semi-qualified. When you so then with your perfect body so fine in form, the golden mountain above the wisdom ocean, your fame so brilliant throughout all three realms, I bow to you, supreme of saviors. Endowed with the supreme marks, your face a stainless moon, I bow to you, your color just like gold. The three realms are not like you, free from dust. I bow to you with your peerless wisdom. Savior, endowed with great compassion, omniscient as a teacher, your merit a field of oceans of virtues, I bow to you, transcendent Lord. It's purity freeing you from attachment, it's goodness freeing beings from the wretched states, exclusively ultimate supreme in meaning, I bow to the Dharma ever bringing peace. Liberated, teaching the liberating path, living well in the perfect trainings, educations, holy fields endowed with good qualities, I bow also to the Sangha community. Not committing any sinful acts, making your virtues become perfect, totally tame your own mind. That is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a candle flame, like illusion, dewdrops, bubbles, like a dream, a lightning flash, and clouds, see all created things as just like that. Through this merit of attaining the exaltation, of an all-seeing one defeating the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrant beings from the ocean of existence, battered by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. And then they have the whole Tibetan about them. It's why, that, why it's nice to read that when you have time is that, and this is where I'm recommending nowadays, the book, The Sublime Continuum which was taught by the future Buddha, Maitreya, in the Tushita heaven, according to the Tibet tradition, after he came down in the form of a dog, and he took Arya Asanga, a great, one of the greatest of the Indian masters and pundits, took with him to that heaven, Tushita, which is a desire realm heaven, actually, but there is a Dharma center in it called Manorama, a Dharma, a Dharma Dara, where the being the Bodhisattva, who's going to be the next Buddha on earth, dwells for a few tens of thousands of years while sort of seeing the world go through, different, emanating different things into the world and seeing the world go through different things. And so supposedly, supposedly the Maitreya Nata, his name, Maitreya Savior, he dictated this book to Arya Sangha, who then wrote it down in that heaven and, or memorized it, I don't know which, they don't specify, brought it down as a, then became a written text in India in the round 400 of the common era. And then uh, commented on it to a whole circle of people who created the big renaissance in Buddhism around that time. So it's called, and, but what it's, the reason I, I recommend it is that it encourages us by unpacking the whole Buddha nature idea in a different way, where we really kind of feel the presence of the Shakyamuni Buddha still here with us in the world, you know, instead of this kind of notion, Kali Yuga, dark age notion, oh, Shakyamuni, oh, yeah, it would be great if I had met him, but then he died. You know, that sort of really meat space way of thinking, where we're only getting impermanence kind of as a, as a, as a fruit. And instead, realizing that a Buddha never can leave the infinite world of the suffering beings until all the beings are free of suffering. And so that Buddha could not have left his, his coarse body continuum of, of, the, of the being he was before he was a Buddha, when he was Prince Siddhartha and a great Bodhisattva. He couldn't have left that body and left this world until we were all free of suffering. So that means that he, having the knowledge of the future as well as the past, saw us through to freedom and nirvana and bliss and Buddhahood. Or he couldn't have left his active mission, let's call it. So that means we are simply, it's a little bit, it could create a kind of self-indulgence and a complacency that we hell. You know, we, we've already got there as far as Buddha's concerned, so I don't have to really make any special effort. It'll just happen. But maybe the way it will happen 
is we'll reach a stage in one of our lives, like we are a little bit now, where we decide we're really going to make it happen. So it isn't completely what the Japanese call, in Japanese Buddhism, they have two things. They have one called zetai tariki, which means totally other powered, the path to enlightenment. And that's where they focus on pure land. You know, that's the Japanese pure land school. And zetai jiriki, total self powered, that's the Zen, where nobody helps you and you have to 100% do it. So we'd be in the middle way there between other power. But reflecting on the Buddha nature interpreted this way, you know, the, 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 in the deepest possible way where I think it was intended by Maitreya, the next Buddha, is incredibly encouraging. Just like thinking of the golden mountain Shakyamuni, thinking of this being a planet and an era when we've heard about somebody who really transcended the, you know, life and death and became deathless and you know, opened the door to the deathless to all of us. You know. And then we can see other people, you know, other great teachers, you know, Lao Tzu, you know, Krishna, uh, the Upanishadic sages, Jesus, Moses, you know, the Hasidics, you know, the Sufis. Uh, uh, we can see them all as, in a way, opening this door. You know? It doesn't have to just be Buddhist and things. But, but Buddha was kind of the golden mountain that kind of made it all happen, actually. By morphically resonating around the planet through time and space, the feeling of freedom and relativity, and therefore the capacity of the free, wise mind to create a most beautiful relativity for the sake of all beings who dwell in it. In it. Right? Kalachak, world of Kalachakra. Best of all possible worlds. Sorry, Voltaire. OK, now, we're gonna, now, now one thing to make us really happy, since we're all totally worried about 